High what? High Wampus. Hot Wampus, part of the High Tribe. Episode 8, State of the W. And what brings us here is the Hot Wampus. Star Wars, Star Trek. Who gives a shit? I'm not a fan of either. Like the sci-fi, storylines are a little wacky. Shit gets too fucking complicated. Keep it simple. Stick to your originals. Don't go fucking off onto your own little path. Fuck you, whoever the fucking people are. I forget what the hell, Steven Seagal or Steven Spielberg or whatever. Fuck you and your Star Wars and st- fuck you and your Star Trek. But the Hoth Wampas, you're cool shit. Caden, get to the chopper. Fuck you, Yinzas. We got Wampas. So Caden with the Hoth Wampas. From what I heard, Caden only started playing like NHL 95 two years ago. So he's not a, like a gamer. He's not like legit, like guy who's played for 20, 30 years. He's only played for two. According to Becker, he was on a party and he learned how to play and got swamped. Since then, things have changed night and day. Dan's team is down. Caden's team is up. And we got the Wampas. So... He's never missed the playoffs in the three seasons that he's played in. He was an expansion team back in the 99th season. Um, one of the top manual, if not the top manual goalie in the league. Took the title away from Dan, that's for sure. Segathon's still up there. Belly's up there. The Yins. Yins of a.k.a. the Nip, a.k.a. the Puss. Fuck you both. Love you both. Philly Ding Dongs, you guys are a different story. Ever. I have your own videos for you guys. When I get up to you, oh, those ones are going to be a doozy. Can't wait for them. Special little wifey number two. Which you self acclaimed yourself as number two for some reason. I'll get to that in one of your like six or seven videos. But then the Hoth Wampas, what hurdles do they have left? They got some big ones, and I'm going to get them to in the strengths and weaknesses. But Hoth on themselves, great team. Great manual goaltending has potential to push themselves into the conversation of the elite. Uh, still ways to go, but he's getting there. Uh, first three seasons in the, the, the W, 35, 22, 6, and 3 was his inaugural season. Then slightly improved it the following year when we expanded to 72 games, which is right here. These are the game numbers. Uh, 36, 24, 6, and 6. And then his most recent season, which is his breakout year. 48, 21, and 17. And you can see the trajectory going up. All of the classic teams, I can't wait until I get to the teams that are like 12 to 20. And this chart's going to be more like this, which is going to be more of a conversation piece. Um, Strengths and weaknesses. Caden, like I said at the beginning, top manual goaltender in the league. Very difficult to play against a guy who plays goaltender the way he does. He's a bit of a sitter. He gets to that blue line. He starts sitting on the goalie. The trick is is to take advantage of any little gap that you can find, and hopefully you can make him force a turnover, which won't give him the opportunity to get his manual goaltending position. You have very limited time to defeat Caden the way you would want to. Going back to like Red's video, beat him with the strengths that he currently has, which creates his weakness. Caden's a little bit similar, but he has the far power on his roster to be able to take it on. However, He's very good at one timers. He's very difficult to play. He doesn't play the typical Yinzer type game or the high type with the cross crease. He has a different variety. He tends to stay away from their type of gameplay cross crease, Canadian dump, or the Yinzer dump. And patience. Caden's one of the most patient players I've seen in the league. Not so much his personality, his gameplay. He has patience. When you watch his game, it tends to slow down a little bit. He can pick it up wherever he needs to, but he has patience. He takes his time. He doesn't fucking rush it. When you attack him, he's patient. When he attacks, he's patient. Going to the next thing, his weaknesses. He's a bit of one of those low-scoring type teams like Segathon. He's not going to fucking rock it out and score a boatload of points, but he will win games. But he'll win the games one by one goal, maybe two, but they'll be low-scoring affairs. I don't think see them being like, seven or eight total goals scored within the game would be more like in the threes and fives. Uh, weakness, Ticklepuss. Is Ticklepuss his official kryptonite? 
So far, the Imperials, which is his Q team, he has difficulty. He's lost to Puss twice now, back-to-back -back seasons in Game 7s. What does Caden need to do to get to that next step? Need to find that out because I think he wants to figure out to get past that hurdle. Puss is an elite. He wasn't ranked number two in my list for nothing. But he needs to get over that hurdle. He needs to get over that tickle puss hurdle. He needs to fucking put a cock into it, pound it out, get that game seven out of his way and beat him early. Puss is a difficult guy to beat, but he's beatable. You need to keep it moving. His roster, I changed it up a little bit. I went with the last names. I'm, I'm tired of writing everybody's fucking names out. But his goaltending is his one weakness. But being a manual goaltender the way Caden is, he doesn't need manual goaltending as much as most goaltenders. It's another Segathon kind of theory here. Ron Tugna, 56 over 3, 61-48, high-low. Not great. Backup likely. But Jean Sebastien Algren is a starter. 64 overall over 7, 69-61, high-low. He's going to need to look for a goalie in the future. A star goalie would be a huge benefit to him. But there is the weaknesses within his goaltending. That's where his biggest weakness, even though it's his strength, overall, it is a weakness. His forwards, he picked up a Ginla, which was a smart move on his part. He might have potentially have his first 100-point scorer. He might already have one, but I don't think he has. Uh, 84 over 15, a high low of 94-70. 70 was his last season in the NHL, which was, I think, Dallas? Don't quote me, or L.A.? can't remember. Then you got Daniel Breer, Zitnik, Grant Gratton, Chris Gratton, uh, Alexander Ladeg, and Steve Ruchin. All interchangeable, these four, five guys. They all carry the same kind of weight overalls, 79, 76, 70, 75, 70, and they're all over a seven to five year period, except Breer, who plays 13. Then their overalls are the same thing. 89, 85, 82, 84, 78 are their high lows. Interchangeable between each other. They're all kind of similar. Breer is probably the only one that's kind of an outlier because he's small. But height doesn't characterize in this game, but his weight does. I think he's 148 or 150 pounds. Everybody else is closer to two. And especially Ruchin and Grat, I think they're both over 210. Um, which, if their checking is good, then I think that's good. But otherwise, I think Ruchin is a little bit more of the checker. Alexander Dig is not. He's your finesse type player. Chris Gratton's okay. Zitnik's kind of a two way center or two way forward that can body check as well. It's got speed and some skill to go and play. But then the, the lows are about the same thing. They're about all around in the same mark. His defense, on the other hand, is another area he's going to have to focus on. It's going to have to tap into some depth on his team. Uh, Saray is his fucking go to guy. 78 over 12. High low of 85, 59. 59 is his tail end of his career. He find a solution down to the late 2000s to figure out who's the defense of the future. But Craig Rivera is a stay at, good stay-at-home defenseman, 66 over 9, 78, 54 overall. Uh, Alexander Kamenov, uh, Kimbanov, and Selene Cote are kind of two just backups. If somebody gets injured, you can play with them for a period, and that's about all you want to do with them. Uh, but Cote has got kind of like a little bit of an upside. He's got a 75 of the seasons. Uh, his draft picks, he's got a first and a second in this year. Oh, four, he's got a first and two seconds, one from Italy. Italy's been making a lot of deals, and Italy's the next team on list, the state of the W. And he's got his first and second for the 06 season. So Caden can fill in some spots, maybe make, make some trades and build up his roster for his goaltending, maybe some defense. His forwards, he's good. Post lockout, he'll be in a good position. You can add a few more pieces here and there. But Caden's the type of player that you're going to be all excited about. One of the top streamers in W. One of the, like, I, I would say my actual number one. Kamesh, I'm the guy at the top, and I got my number one. My number one is Caden. I not, no disrespect to anybody else, like Salvo, all the other streamers, the uh, beat writers, Puss and Sean Bell, all the other people who communicate in the pods. Everything of that stuff, the, the Yinzers, the fucking uh, the high guys, everything else like that. But the big thing is, Caden helps me with the Google Sheets. He helps me with the save states and box scores. That's a huge relief off the top of my head, and he helps it in multiple weeks. So he's my number one. Wolfie, you could be number two. It doesn't really matter. You don't carry much weight as a number two. Number one tells you what to do. I tell number one what to do. If I shit on number one, number one shits on you. Shit rolls downhill.
and your wolfie pat on your little puppy head. But given other topics, uh, Hoth is going to be a playoff team. He still has to go through the Enzerville to get to the fucking playoffs. Get to the championship game, he has to go through the Enzerville. He's got a few hurdles. He's got nips and puss. He's also got Ellis. Ellis has been one of those up-and-comers ever since he came in the league. Every year he's increasing. He's at that cusp right now. He's going to be a constant League Cup team. His roster, on the other hand, is going to have to take some adjustments. He's only a couple more teams away because he's a team on the rise. And then he has to worry about Mary Hill and Taipei. And then there's the other type of guys who could potentially work in there. Is you got uh, G Lock, you got Providence is still in there. Techno John, we really have, he's a question mark because he hasn't played a full season. And then you add in the, uh, the up and comers in Caledonia and Baytown, even Chalky in there as well. Um, other things people are saying, what are the tricks to successful breakaways and penalty shots? I figure it out going down is a little bit easier as you have to hug a post. You've got to kind of aim at one of the goalposts and we kind of juke the goalie from there. It's really difficult. I give up a lot of goals, but a goalie does that little tiny like stand up and like hands crossed in front of him. He gives up always the goal to the right hand side. Never really gives it up to the left. That might be something regarding the stick and glove hand strengths, but I don't think it is. I had Andy Milk in the queue and it happened quite a bit. Bakun, it happens quite a bit. I tend to use my manual goaltender a little too aggressively or under aggressively, and I let them auto take care of it and I get fucked. But penalty shots are a little bit different than breakaway. They're two different fucking pieces. Breakaways, Sean Bell shows it. It's a couple of moves. You don't want to get over fancy because back checkers are pretty quick. You're not going to have very much time to make that decision on what side you want to do it on. You tend to do it one or two moves. You take an angle and stick to it and then try to juke the goalie. If he goes to manual, you got to look for a drop off or you got to look for some other outlet to be able to score on him. A lot of people might try to use an up B or a down B in those little spots where they might have, have a gap. Penalty shots, on the other hand, you got 20 seconds. Figure it out. It takes you a good five seconds to get right in front of the goaltender. A lot of people try to juke, they try to spin, they try to go side to side. A lot of the things, it's preference and it's also who's the goaltender. Who are you playing against and how aggressive are they as a goaltender and how aggressive they are as staying back and just waiting for you to make the first mistake. G-Lock is probably one of the funniest ones is that he will die at your players. And he's he's actually the league leader of all time in the W of goalie goals. So that's a, something he can hang his hat on. Hoth, on the other hand, is the one of those type of ones. He's just up there with the manual goaltenders. They just sit and wait. He can't do too much. You see a spot, you take it. You cannot hesitate. It's the kind of thing where you're like, I'm going to do three or four of these, do this, do that, and then dump it. You're going to go for that, dump it. If you have that gap, sooner take it because you're going to lose it later on. You're not going to have that opportunity. Breakaways, you have very limited time. Penalty shots, you have time, but you have to be executing them on the right amount of time because if you don't, you're going to lose the opportunity later on. You have a 20-second window. You're not having somebody back checking. You don't have somebody fucking trying to force the puck out of your head. And then you have to also worry about the goalie. Penalty shots, you got your time to take the decision. A lot of people have techniques. A lot of them are spin, jukes, and everything else like that. Everybody will have their own style. You can even use a slap shot for all I know. I haven't really tried it. It might be an opportunity to do something. A down B, who knows? You might use a seagull. Who knows what you want? People want to know what a seagull is. A segathon. He basically flicks the puck in the air and hopes it hits off the back of your goalie. When it's an auto goalie, not manual, because penalty shots are forced to be a manual goalie. Either, neither here or there. The Hoth Wampus, State of the W, Episode 8. Next up, Italy, EBC, grab your crotch. Fuck you. This is not New York. This is Italy. <laughs>